Welcome. Hey, let's stand. Come on in if you're out in the foyer. We uh, no chili until after service, so good to have you here. We uh, turn a little, little bit of a festive day with it being Super Bowl Sunday. Thought we'd get your pre-game and kicked off early here with some chili after the service. So um, hope you'll hang around, try out a few. You get to vote on your favorite. And uh, next week we've got a uh, solid gold trophy to give out, so that's going to be exciting. So, well, at least they tell me it's solid gold. Uh, hey, we're going to open our service as we're in the habit of doing. We pray for another community of faith. Today might be a little bit different. A lot of people aren't quite aware that uh, the Salvation Army actually has its origins and continues to be uh, a church. We know that they're uh, incredibly engaged in just meeting the real felt needs of the impoverished in the communities that uh, around the country and the parts of the world that they serve in. Um, but they are a church, and they regularly meet together as churches and, uh, and hold services and such. So we're praying for their representation in Lewiston today. Join me if you would, Lord. We thank you for the history and rich heritage of this community of faith, Lord. They took very serious, uh, generations ago, uh, the exhortation to remember the poor, to be kind to the poor, to care for the poor. And we're thankful for them. And Lord, we pray that they'd be able to be attentive to that mission here in the 21st century and that you keep them inspired through your spirit and the truth of your word. So we pray blessing upon uh, this community of faith. And Lord, here for us today, we welcome your presence. Holy Spirit, would you come uh, make us aware of your presence as we give you this offering of worship. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, say hi to your neighbor. Tell them eagles or chiefs, depending on who you're cheering for. your breath come from heaven fill our hearts with your life we are here for you yes we are here for you to you our hearts are Shout! 
always be the God who's gone before us, the God who never leaves. So how do we forget that you are all our rest? Jesus, we relent. We thank you for your presence. Breathe in. Sing out. Oh, my soul. right now. He's never left you. And I just encourage you to keep praising him, keep rejoicing in the midst of trouble or trials. Just know he is here with you. He's never left you. So let's just sing that one more time. Let me hear you breathe in, sing out.
Just wanna speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Yeah. I just wanna speak the name of Jesus. Declaring there is hope in freedom. I speak Jesus.
Jesus. All right, everybody, I want you to think about what's going on in your lives right now in which you need to speak the name of Jesus, whether it's addiction, whether it's just pains, whether it's your family, no matter what it is. Maybe it's just to give thanks for what's going on in life, but whatever it is, speak the name of Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. No matter what it is, no matter where you're at, speak the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. We pray that in your name right there. Amen. Amen. All right, please be seated. Whew. Speak the name of Jesus. That's good. All right, well, my name is Seth. Uh, real quick, if, you're ne if your dog's name is Angus, we have your dog out in the parking lot. If you came this morning uh, and you brought a dog with you, it's running around, and one of our safety team members has it, so please exit and, uh, and go to take care of that. Uh, but also, I wanted to explain myself. For right now, you might notice, I'm wearing this ugly Patriot jersey. Hey, I got to speak the truth. I am a Cowboys fan, and I've spoken that right here from this stage many, many times, and I don't want to go against that. But in 2005, my wife and I had a baby boy and we named him Brady. Not after Tom Brady, we just named him Brady. But so ever since then, I have been wearing this jersey, and each time I do, it, not, it doesn't represent Tom. It represents my son, Brady, who's out here somewhere this morning. So it's out of love for him. Yes. So I don't know why you're wearing your jerseys, but I hope it also represents something meaningful to you as well. So. Uh, this morning, if you came with a tithe or an offering that you want to give, please do so on your way out. There's boxes at all the doors. Uh, you can always give online as well, Church Center app. You can go on our website, lots of different ways uh, to give. So let me just pray a blessing over that. So Father, thank you again just for this day that we can speak the name of Jesus over any of our situations. Uh, but God, also thank you for the, for the money that's coming in today. We just pray that you'd bless it in your name. Amen. All right, let's see what's going on on the screens for this week's announcements. Hey! Welcome to Pathway. We're glad you're here. My name is Malik. I'm on staff here at Pathway. And if you are new here, we would love to connect with you. If you are tech savvy, you can scan the QR code from your smartphone and fill it out right from your phone and seat. If you prefer things 
of an old fashioned way, we have paper connect cards too. Regardless of how you fill it out, we would love to connect with you at the info booth after service. Every newcomer gets a gift. Yeah, you didn't know that? Go to the booth. Just to say thank you for checking us out today. Parents Night Out is happening February 25th, 530 to 8 p.m. for kids ages pre-K through fifth grade. The kids will have a blast while you take the night off. But make sure you sign your kids up on the Church Center app and or our website to death. Celebrate Recovery, or known as CR, is a Christ-centered recovery program that meets in the Pathway Cafe every Friday night at 6 p.m. CR is not just for those struggling with addiction. It's for anyone and everyone struggling with life hurts and habits or hang-ups. Everyone can benefit from attending CR. For more information on Celebrate Recovery, you can find it under groups in the Church Center app or come see us at the info booth. And for our final segment, did you know that 59 years ago this month, the Beatles, the hits just keep coming, debuted on the Ed Sullivan Show in 1964. Their influence on music and culture is immeasurable. So, if you would stand and turn to the person near you and ask them if they've listened to the Beatles. And, as always, we hope you feel welcome and love at Pathway. It's good to be with you, and uh, got a lot, lot to uh, celebrate today in terms of just uh, what the Lord's doing. I love that last song we sang. Oh my gosh, it's just so powerful, and uh, you know, sets exhortation to just speak the name Jesus over whatever situation. Uh, you know, that that is our pathway forward. So uh, it's through Him. Well, we've got a couple things I want to do before we uh, uh, lead up to today's talk, but. Uh, you know, we, we try to have a little bit of fun with today being Super Bowl Sunday. We started a few years ago uh, incorporating a chili cook-off. And so after the service, I hope you'll stay around. Try the chilies. You can try them all. Try any number you like. And uh, then you get to vote on which one you think was the favorite. We'll present the winner with a trophy, and they get bragging rights for a year. Uh, next week, next Sunday, we'll do that. 
Uh, also, if you want to donate, you can make a donation. You do not have to make a donation in order to participate in the chili uh, cook-off, trying it and stuff. But uh, anything that does get donated just uh, sponsors kids for uh, their programs throughout the year, so teenagers. So we're looking forward to that. But we like to have a little bit of fun with it, so we say wear your favorite uh, sports gear today, jersey, uh, whatever. It could be baseball, basketball, football. And I got a gift card. I got a gift card to uh, Dick's Sporting's Good uh, for the winner. And uh, it says it's somewhere between $25 and $500 on here. So I don't know how much, I don't know how much you're getting if you win this, but you get something. So, hey, if you have sports paraphernalia on, would you stand and uh, just say, you, I, hey, Malik, come help me out here. So uh, typically I've asked a non-sports fan to help me pick out. Um, but they picked someone from the Celtics for a service, and I'm like, a Celtics jersey, that shouldn't be winning this, and, and we've got better representation this service. I, I personally went with the Tennessee Titans, I like old school smash mouth football, so Derrick Henry fan, yeah, wow, that's, a, that's old school right there, wow, but your husband's on staff, so you can't win, so sorry, uh, all right, let's, let's do this. Uh, let's do this. Uh, uh, Seth, you pick your favorite jersey in the audience. Malik, walk around, pick your favorite one, and then bring that, bring that person up here. We're going to have a clap off. Um, I want my, my Chargers dude to come up. If you, would you come up here? Because you're my favorite. I like that little Kansas City Chief cheerleader right there. Though She's kind of cute, but again, that's my wife, so you can't win. And uh, I, I don't know who I'm cheering for today. Eagles, I got to make a decision because you can see my wife's a Chiefs fan. So I got to decide what I want my week to go like. Do I cheer for the Chiefs or do I go with the Eagles? I, I haven't decided yet. I haven't decided what I'm up for. All right. So, Malik, who'd you pick? Blackhawks, okay, we, so we got the Blackhawks, we got the Chargers, th th that's a sharp jersey right there, if I was leaning towards one, I'd be, don't clap yet, don't clap yet, what do we got here, Strout, we've got, uh, uh, that's football I guess in the European sense, so there we go, and then we got Crosby Bruins jersey here, I'd have gone Cam Neely myself, but that's okay, so, all right, so this is what we're going to do, now hopefully all of you uh, have a lot of um, uh, you know, you're not insecure people because three of you aren't going to win. So uh, I apologize for that. But it, guys, we're going to do an applause off. Now, you've got to participate here. The loudest applause is going to be the winner of this $50,000 gift card to Dick's Sporting Goods. So if you, now, okay, ready? We're going to go in order here. So if you think the Bruins jersey, let me hear it for the Bruins. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Penguins, 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 Penguins. I don't know why my brain was thinking Sidney Crosby was playing for the Bruins, but I'm sorry. We need to try that again. I wasn't listening. Pe Penguins jersey. All right. St. Dom's jersey. Is that St. Dom's? Uh, Monmouth. Monmouth Academy. Monmouth Academy jersey. Wow, that's pretty good. Chargers jersey. <laughs> and who is it over here? Blackhawks Black shirt. All right, now we are not a congregational church, so we're not voting on this. I'm giving it to the uh, Chargers. So thank you guys. So next year, if you want to win $50,000 at Dick's Sporting Good, I encourage you to get some type of sports paraphernalia. So hang around after the service if you can. It'll be a lot of fun. We are exploring four aspects of community life, uh, functions that happen in the life of a church. We think these are all uh, biblically based and, and should be experienced at some point uh, of the life of, of church uh, members, the family of God, as they walk their community uh, life out in, in, as God has called us as, as followers of Jesus. So we looked at in the fall how we're really created to serve, like God empowers us with spiritual gifts that we may use those talents and abilities that he breathes on in a supernatural way as a way of uh, an expression of worship to him, but they're also used to serve one another. And it's a 
good part of what we're purposed for as human beings is to live uh, for the benefit of other people. But we are also uh, called to receive. Like, we are meant to experience God. We are meant to experience certain aspects of the kingdom as we live in Christian community. And in any given season, we believe the church should practically and figuratively uh, be a living demonstration of four things. And depending where you're at on your journey, if you believe God deposited you here, and I would say, I believe that if you feel like this is the community of faith God's called you to, he has deposited you here on purpose with this community of people at this given moment. Not only that your life may be used at some point as a benefit of others, but so that you might experience something having to do with your faith relationship with Jesus at this given moment. So one of these will resonate with you over the course of the four weeks. Last week we looked at, through scripture, how at times the church serves as a school. We are in a season of learning. We want to explore what it is that we believe, what the things that we know about God, and maybe the things that we want to discover about God. And so God may have placed you here because for this season of life, he's inviting you into the spiritual classroom. And a church should come alongside, because we're in the business of making disciples, helping people to grow in their relationship with Jesus, a church should serve you in that way at times. That as you're in the place of the spiritual classroom, that you have an environment in which you can grow in your understanding of Jesus. And if that's where you're at, our exhortation was, press into that. Get involved. If you're not quite sure on, well, what does the pathway to learning look like? Let us help you in that. That really is part of what we do as a community of faith. As that is going on, and some people find themselves in the, in the spiritual classroom, simultaneously the church, for some of you, is the first time that you have begun to experience family in a healthy way. Uh, perhaps all of us, you know, all of us grow up in a family of some level of dysfunction, but maybe yours has been uh, greatly filled with dysfunction, and you've never really known what it felt like to be a, a son or a daughter, to have uh, brothers and sisters and to have some level of health in terms of a functioning family. And the Bible references the church as the family of God, the body of believers, over and over and over. So there should be a season, and you should experience that along your, your spiritual growth, that God really has deposited you in a family. Now, not that any community of faith is, is free from uh, things that can creep up that uh, cause conflict and we have to work through, but we should work through them in a God-centered way and experience family in, in a very healthy way. And then for others, you maybe you're in a season where you're very well aware of the day and the hour that we live in, uh, the extreme brokenness in the world that surrounds us, uh, the powers and principalities and the spiritual uh, existence of an enemy that just... Uh, it wreaks havoc on the planet and the evil that exists. And God has you at a point where you've grown in your journey with him to a place where you're ready to just be on mission. You're ready to be light in the midst of a dark world. And so for you, you're ready to be mobilized as the army of God. And you want to be uh, an ambassador of Christ in the environment in which you have influence and bring light into darkness. And so for you, you're saying, well, how do I get involved? How do I get involved in sharing my faith? out and about beyond the church and out and about in the community that, that I am part of. And we'll look at that in a couple weeks. Today, we're going to look at how the church is a place of healing for some of you who really need to be in the hospital. Who maybe life has beaten you up and broken you up and you're at a place where you just need healing. And the church should be an environment which fosters uh, healing for those that have been beaten up by either their own uh, brokenness or by the brokenness of the world that they reside in. The New Testament is filled with how Jesus came to heal while he was here to save the lost. And they went hand in hand. If you look at the, the record of Jesus throughout the New Testament, just time after time after time, he's in the business of healing. Uh, spiritual, physical, uh, mental, emotional uh, conditions that are afflicting people. Luke four eighteen, Jesus says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim, pro proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. To set 
free those who are oppressed to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. And I could have put any number of verses up. Jesus demonstrating that he came to relieve people from the brokenness of this age, both naturally and spiritually. Then his exhortation is for us, the people of God, to do the same. Now, as he was working with the disciples and sending them out to influence the broader communities, and eventually they'd go on and be church planters, he gives them this instruction, but this instruction wasn't just reserved for them. This was really as though Jesus is addressing the church, of which we are the church of the 21st century. So this is Christ's instruction uh, to you and I as to what we should be giving ourselves to as the church of Jesus Christ. Matthew 10, 6-8, he says, Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. He says, As you go, as you go about life, as you navigate the journey that you are on, do this. Proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. And that's where we start. We, we sound the gong that the kingdom of heaven has broken into this present age. Now it may not be here in the fullness that it will be when Jesus comes again. But right in this present moment, the kingdom of heaven is near. The kingdom of heaven is here. Thus the power of God is available to act in our lives. He says to this, to the church, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Certainly we need the Lord's help to participate in that, but he gives us the Holy Spirit to do so. He says, freely you have received, freely give. Pathway is committed to walking people through healing from brokenness and from bondages that have attached themselves to them and this really is part of the good news of the message of Jesus Christ. That the fall of man, sin, compromised all of God's creation, leaving this planet vulnerable to sin and evil. Due to a compromised creation, we find ourselves navigating our life's journey, often afflicted in some capacity, either psychologically, physically, or emotionally, leaving us in a place of healing. Now, mercifully, God provides healing in a natural sense, but also in a spiritual sense. But naturally, God has gifted humans with uh, the brilliance of science, the brilliance of intellect, and that has resulted in being able to take the natural elements of the world and the formation of medicines and, and, and the brilliance of the mind creating environments of health and healing and many of the medical organizations that we have, all a gift from God. He's given us brilliant minds to uh, be dedicated to the practice of psychology and uh, physiology, sociology, pharm phar pharmacology, kinesiology, all the ologies, not man-made. Often humans take the credit for that, but inspired by God, all as a gift to contribute to our healing. That's in the very natural sense. There is, however, only one place that provides an environment and a message of healing that goes beyond what natural medicine addresses, and that's the church of Jesus Christ. It's within the church of Jesus Christ that people can, can receive, hear a message and receive a spiritual healing for that which really ails them, which is a broken heart separated from God. And when we begin to address that, if that becomes the starting point, then we really open ourselves up for the Spirit to work in our lives, to bring healing to every area of our life that we may walk in wholeness, whatever that looks like. Whatever wholeness as determined by God looks like for us, so that we are not defined by the, the broken parts of our life. And a healthy church will offer, offer a healing environment uh, for people that are in desperate need uh, for that healing. You know, uh, oftentimes the church gets thought of uh, in cultural settings as the place to go, but you better get your life cleaned up before you go there. Uh, because the church people act as if they have life all put together. Right? And, and that couldn't be further from the truth. Like, it's not go get your life cleaned up and then God will welcome you as his child. Go get your life cleaned up, and then the people of God will say, yeah, well, now that you're cleaned up, sure, we want you in our community. That, that, that's nowhere near the truth as, as God understands the mission that he's called us to. 
I mean, that would be like someone suffering from arteriosclerosis and they drop to their knees uh, having a heart attack because three, uh, two of the arteries have blocked up and you look at them and say, hey man, you should really get your heart taken care of and then go to the hospital. Well, of course we wouldn't do that. You know, if you're afflicted by something, there's not an expectation that you go get it worked out, then go seek medical help. No, you, you go to where the help is is provided and the same is true for the church of Jesus Christ like at your lowest brokest weakest most vulnerable point is a time that you you are most ready to experience the healing that God has available for you many of us are our lives are are a testimony of that the local church is and must be a place in which the weary wanderer suffering from any level of the brokenness of this age is welcomed as they are in the midst of whatever it is that they're suffering from and invited to find a wholeness and healing, hope and a future, mercy and grace, community and belonging as they navigate the journey of believing, as they're in process. You know, that phrase, God helps those who help themselves, is not in the Bible. You know, that's one of the phrases that gets attributed to Scripture more than any other. God, God helps those who help themselves. No, he doesn't. He helps those that have no help to themselves. He helps the helpless and the hopeless and the disheartened and the disenfranchised. Those are the very ones that he, he came for. In Mark 2, uh, it says, when the teachers of the law who were there, uh, they saw, the Pharisees saw who Jesus was eating with, sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? Why does he eat with the riffraff of the community? Why does he eat with the people that nobody likes? On hearing this, Jesus said to them, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I've come not to call righteous, but sinners. And the church can't get lost and uh, step away from that message. That we don't exist to just be a club to pat each other on the back and say, hey, you're doing a great job. No, we, we want to be on our own journey of, of health and wholeness so that we can continually be making room for those that aren't yet here. That desperately need the hope that we have. And we can never communicate a message, hey, get your act together, and then we'll, then we'll welcome you. And, and I'd say Pathway doesn't do that, nor should we ever do that. The Church of Jesus Christ should never do that. We should be a hospital uh, for the wounded and the weary, the very place that they can find healing along life's journey. The church must be a triage center, an emergency room, an extended care facility, granting the weary pilgrim access to the care that God has trusted us with. Now, I, I said in the first service, and I'll explain a little bit better this service, a couple of you had questions, but the church isn't a hospice, meaning that we're not preparing you, we're not, we're not, we can prepare you to die, but this isn't the place you should come to die. Maybe die to yourself, die to your flesh, die to the natural man, but not just like hang out in your last few days and hours suffering and, 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 and you know, hanging on and, and then, you know, passing away into oblivion. No, this should be the place you come to find healing so that you might live and live the life that, that God intended, the spiritual life that he's invited you into. And this isn't just kind of pie-in-the-sky theology that promises that being part of a church, you know, guarantees immediate freedom from all afflictions. You know, I would say this, that until Jesus comes again, human beings will be prone to suffering afflictions, even as they walk in relationship with Jesus. Now, we pray, and we hope, and we expect the miraculous power of God to break in, into our physical, psychological, emotional uh, afflictions. But I do know this, that even if Jesus doesn't relieve us from a particular affliction, that doesn't mean that we can't find healing and wholeness and purpose along the journey. And we often do. I remember there, there, was, a, a, there was a gal who came here for a couple decades that uh, was born with a condition that left her crippled up. And for many years, she moved about with canes and a walker. And then for a number of years has been wheelchair bound. And I more on, on more than one occasion prayed. And, and every time I saw her actually I'd pray. I said Lord how awesome would it be. 
if you just healed her body and she didn't need that, that, those devices. And, and, I, and we would pray, and we would pray for miracles, and we would pray for healing. And one could look at that and say, well, like, God never healed her. Like, I thought he was the God of miracles. But you know what you couldn't see is her heart. And you, what you couldn't see is inside her mind. What you couldn't see is the gifts that God had placed in her unless she allowed you to see them on display. But she was one of the greatest prayer warriors this community of faith ever had. She found wholeness. She found purpose. She found her place in the kingdom. And I'd say if you asked her, she would have felt like she was healthy and whole. And for whatever reason, Jesus has just said, you'll walk when you get to heaven. Your heart will beat right when you get to heaven. That's sometimes his answer. Your kidneys will work right when you get to heaven. Your diabetes will be gone when you get to heaven. That doesn't prevent us from saying, God, I want that now. And sometimes he says, okay, I'll give you that now. But if he doesn't, that doesn't mean we can't find wholeness, healing, and purpose in, in, in the parts of our lives that he wants to breathe upon and, and then we become part of a community of faith to the point where we move beyond those broken things that used to define us. And then we actually become part of the healers within the community. Because the best healers within any community are usually the people that, that, that came to us in the most broken state. And they've discovered what Jesus has done in their life. And then they live in such a way in which they pay that forward. There's a great... There's a great passage in Luke that I want to read because you might be here and say, okay, I, I admit, I, I'm wounded, I'm weary, I'm broken, I'm beat up, and God has deposited me here. So what do I do? Well, I'm glad you asked. Initially, maybe nothing. Initially, God may just have here for you to receive and to lean on the people that he's placed around you. Because oftentimes when we're wounded and weary, we don't, even, we don't have faith for ourselves. We need the faith of other people to get us in front of Jesus. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's no shame in that. You know, Jesus is building his church in such a way that when you are at your lowest moment, he'll put people around you that will be able to carry you to the feet of Jesus so that you can be in the place where you can find healing. We see that on display in Luke 5. Luke 5, there's this great uh, story, which if you try to put yourself in the moment, actually place yourself in the text as being an observer... It's quite a, a, a unique scene that would have been pretty interesting to watch play out. It says, one day Jesus was teaching, and Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and from Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. So there was a phenomena taking place. It was supernatural activity. The Holy Spirit was working through Jesus, and as Jesus prayed for people, they were getting well. It says, some men carrying a paralyzed man on a mat, some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. Now, do you catch this? Like, there, there's a crowd formed. We don't know. This might have been Jesus' home, the one he was residing. We don't know. The text doesn't say. But whatever it is, he's in this home. There's this phenomena happening. So certainly people are crowding around, wanting to see what is happening. These guys have a friend who can't walk. He certainly cannot get himself before Jesus on his own initiative. So they say, we'll, 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 we'll get you before Jesus. And I, just that alone, I think, is something to, to dwell upon. To think about maybe the people in our lives who are at their own desperate moment, who just don't seem to have the capacity to take one healthy step forward. And how we feel about them. Would, could it be that maybe Jesus has placed them in our life so that we could help facilitate getting them in front of Jesus? I don't know, I just thought, as I was talking today, that, that kind of just came to my own thoughts. Like, who is it that Jesus has put in my life that he just wants me to help carry them to the feet of Jesus? And so they do, but they can't get through the crowd, and so this remarkable scene takes place. I mean, imagine if this is your home, Super Bowl Sunday, 
the Holy Spirit falls upon your home and suddenly your friends are getting healed and the neighbors are coming over and, and, and suddenly there's no more room in the house and someone down the street, the, some, some guys get together and say, hey, we got a buddy who can't walk. Let's get him, let's get him over to so-and-so's house. And they can't get through the crowd and all of a sudden you hear crowbars start to rip up your roof. Right? And dust begins to fall in and insulation. And before you know it, they're lowering this one through. And to get him, why? To get him to the feet of Jesus. And what does Jesus do? Looks at him and says, your sins are forgiven. Now that was peculiar to the Pharisees. They thought, Ooh, sins are forgiven. Obviously the man can't walk Jesus. Why are you talking about sins? But did you catch what it said? It said, Jesus looked at the man and saw the faith of the friends. Sometimes we need to be the ones that have faith for other people. It's easy to look at people and say, if they just clean up their act, life would go a lot better for them. It may just be that you're just saying, no, I want you to have faith for them. I want you to engage in their life in such a way that you, you try everything to get them in front of Jesus. Don't let any obstacle stand in your way. You got to get on the roof and pull the roof off to get them in front of Jesus. Do what you got to do. Get them in front of Jesus. I know there have been people in my life that have been seasons where I've had to lean on the faith of other people because I didn't believe it. I didn't believe God wanted to do that in my life. I didn't have enough faith for it. I knew the way I felt. And, and, and the misery that was upon me, it was like, I don't have faith for that. And that's a gift we can give others, which the church should. If you don't have faith for yourself, I'll have faith for you. I'll get you in front of Jesus. Every week when I exhort you to come get prayer, if you'd like, that's all we're doing. We're saying, hey, there's folks up here that will have faith for you this morning. you got a situation in your life you don't know how to navigate. Let them talk to Jesus on your behalf. Maybe then your breakthrough will come. That's what we do in our small group ministry here. We're just a, a collection of ragamuffins just trying to navigate this journey of faith just cheering for one another. When one of us is, when some of us are up, we find the one that's down and, and we drag them before Jesus. I'll have faith for you. And that, that's what they did. The Pharisees look at this and they say, in verse 21, they begin to think of themselves, who is this guy to, to speak such blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus is using this moment in the much broader picture to show he's the son of God. But the Pharisees, the, the ultra-religious uh, people in the crowd, weren't getting it. Jesus knew what they were thinking, and he asked, Why are you thinking these things in your heart? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man, Jesus says, I want you to know that I have the authority on earth to forgive sin. He's, this is a declaration of Jesus here saying, I'm God. Basically what he's saying. Said, but because they weren't quite getting it, he looks at the paralyzed man. He says, "Son, uh, he says, he says, uh, son of man has authority on earth to give." So he said to the paralyzed man, "I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home." Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on, and went home praising God. And, that, and that's the beauty of it: is God not only addressed uh, the spiritual need, but in this case, he addressed the physical need. And he told the guy, "I love verse 24." He says, "Pick up your mat and go home." He's like, you're free from that now, so you don't have to hang out there. You don't have to reside there. You don't have to get back on it. You're free from it. And the church should be an environment in which that happens. That you come, bro maybe you come broken, wounded, and, and, and crippled up by whatever condition you have going on in life. But the Spirit of God, you should get to the point where the Spirit of God, through the cooperation with His Spirit and the ministry of His people, gets you to a point where you then are no longer defined by that thing. It may always be part of your story, but it doesn't define where you're going in terms of your relationship with God and what he has purposed you for. You know, if you find yourself in need of the church being a hospital right now, there's no shame in that. It's part of why we exist. My encouragement to you would be this. Receive. Receive. If, if you don't know quite what that means or what that looks like, you just know I'm wounded, I'm beat up, I'm broken, I don't even know if I have an ounce of hope for myself. I would just say if you could muster up the courage to, to, to let us know that, we can help get you right into the right environment that you need to be in. But it, it often just takes you, you know, allowing yourself to receive the care that God has placed around you. And then after a season, 
and you, uh, you may have some work to do that complements what the community of faith can offer. But then after a season, uh, you will find yourself in, in a place in which you then have healing hands to come alongside and offer the next weary wanderer that, that, that comes our way. I'd say if I, if I asked, probably many of you would courageously uh, be honest and say, yeah, when I came here, I was a mess. And I'm not that person anymore. That's what I love about baptisms. And I love it when we do baptisms. Because what you're seeing is you're seeing that some weary wanderer made their way into our community. And then they're standing before you and say, yeah, I was that, but I'm not that anymore. And there's many of you that have that testimony this morning. There's some of you that maybe you're just on the precipice of that. You're just stuck in your brokenness and your, in, in your sickness and your dysfunction right now. And I say, welcome. You're exactly where you need to be. And the only barrier is you having the courage to say, I could use some help. Because you look around this room, a church our size, in terms of this, this second service crowd right now, it can be easy to hide. You, you can come in and, and take up a seat and, and, and nobody really knows what's going on. And, and you can leave here just as broken as when you got here, if you want to. I just ask, why would you want to? Because if you're here, I believe God brought you here. Why? So that you can discover that he created you on purpose, for a purpose, and that baggage that defines you today, he wants to throw off. Let's stand. So I will, as always, invite a prayer team to come down front and be available to uh, pray. Some of you should probably uh, get prayer for your cholesterol before you go get chili here in a moment. But guys, there's nothing that we don't believe God can break off. We, we believe in a God who heals physically broken bodies. We believe in a God who heals uh, broken minds, broken emotions, broken relationships. I think, you know, the, the adage is, well, if God does that, why don't we see more of it? I don't think the problem's on God's end. I think oftentimes we're just not willing to get over ourselves and put ourselves in environments where we ask for healing. And we, we, we allow God to work through other people in our lives. And so I say that to say if this talk today resonated with you and you feel like God's got you in the hospital... Maybe a good starting point for you would be just get over yourself. And at, when I dismiss, let one of these folks pray for you. See if God doesn't begin to allow someone else to have faith for your healing. And I will exhort you, as long as you hang around here, I'll exhort you to do life in community smaller than what you're in right now. And do life groups with us and small groups with us and celebrate recovery groups with us. And whatever groups, if we have a group that doesn't meet the, the healing need that you have, we'll start that group. We will. All we need is a little cooperation on your part. Say, I need some help. So, Lord, I pray for us, Lord, all, Lord, because at any moment, uh, uh, I think sometimes we cycle through these things. Maybe we're in the school today, or maybe we're just coming out of a season in which we have felt mobilized in the army of God, but at any moment, the, the need for the hospital bed could arise. And Lord, as we go through these rhythms of life, may we just have the courage to respond to whatever season we're in. And Lord, and receive from you in that season. Lord, so I pray right now, anybody that feels wounded, weary, broken by this world, that the great physician would come right now and begin a process of healing in the heart of every human here, Lord every human listening to this right now. God, that we may find freedom from those things that keep us down. Holy Spirit, come right now. Begin a healing process in our lives. And then, Lord, then for the rest of us, may we not get cynical with the world around us, but may we see ourselves as those friends carrying that crippled before you, Lord. We have the capacity to do something for the broken people around us. We can be a hand of mercy and compassion.
compassion, leading somebody to the feet of Jesus. May we not grow weary in that. Bless my friends. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come get some prayer if you'd like. Stop out. Vote on your favorite chili. God bless you guys. We'll see you on the journey.